All right, good morning. Uh, let me turn my music off. Oh, I probably should put my hat back on because my hair looks awful. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. There. Okay, so we're going to do a couple problems from geometry. Uh, let me uh, stop my music here so you guys can hear me clearly. We don't got anything in the background. Um, uh, let's do number 10 and, and number 11. The assignment's due tonight, and uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll, we'll move on. But I just want to do a couple uh, examples. I did have somebody reach out and ask about number 10. Just so you know, we're planning on a Zoom meeting on Friday to uh, maybe collect all, uh, get, get see everybody, make sure everybody's okay. But if there's any questions overall that we need to ask, it's not required, but it'd be good to have. And... Um, and good to see you. So, all right, let me get it off this double screen. Just saying hi to everybody, and uh, let's get going on number 10. It says, this is on page, oh, I gotta take my glasses off. It stinks getting old. This is page 40, number 10. It says, use the point. Let me focus in there. Dun, 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 Use the points. By the way, this is being recorded. All videos can be found on Canvas and on YouTube. Okay, so use the points A of 2, 3, and B of 2, negative 3. Okay, so that looks to me like, uh, you know what, let's graph that. See what that looks like real quick. You may not have graph paper, so you might want to just do it normally. I happen to have some graph paper, so I'm just going to show it real quick. So we go 1, 2, and then 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, and then 1, 2, 3. So here is A at 2, 3. You guys see that okay? Good. And here is B at 2, negative 3. This looks like a vertical line. Okay, so this is a vertical line. Remember, a vertical line has undefined slope. No, we're not there yet. Vertical line, two, three, two, negative three. All right, describe AB and find its length. Okay, so for part A, if we're describing, I just said that. It's a vertical line. Now, technically, this is a line segment because it has endpoints, right? Okay, so that's a line segment. Now, how far is it? Well, we can do the distance formula, but there's no need. We can just count from 3 to negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it has a length or a distance of 6 units. Okay, does that answer question A? I think it does. All right, let's go to B. All right, B says, describe the image of the segment AB under the transformation. Here's the uh, notation rule where we go X and then 2Y. Okay, so here's the best way to do it, right? We take each point, we take A and we take B, follow this pattern, and you'll see that this is the best way. And now we're going to apply the rule of X. I'm going to get a different color here for... We're going to apply the rule of this right here. We're going to call that A prime. The X stays the same, but the Y becomes 2 times Y. So the Y becomes 6. Everyone see that? All I did was put 3 in for Y. 2 times that made that 6. We're going to do the same thing here. And that becomes B prime. And that becomes 2 negative six. You know, if I were looking at this on a graph, that means we'd go four, five, six, negative four, negative five, negative six. It looks like it would just be this almost the same. It's just, right? So we're going from six to negative six. Let's see what it says. Describe the image of segment under the transformation. I think we just did. That's the, that's the image of segment AB. And how long is it? It is 12 units long. 12 units long. Okay? Again, if you have any questions, and you can always email me. All right, let's go to part C.
All right, part, part C says, describe the image of the segment AB under the transformation. Okay, here's a new one. X, Y, and now we're going X plus 2, Y. So the transformation is we're adding 2. All right, let's go back to our, we got 2, 3 here, and we've got 2, negative 3 there. Now we're going to apply the transformation. We're adding 2, so my A prime in this case, I wonder if I should call this A double prime. Nah, we'll just call it A prime. A prime in this game is, this time is 2 plus 2, which is 4, 3. And then B prime is 4, negative 3. What's that look like on the graph? Let's take a look. Okay, so now it's the exact same as our original, except we've moved it over two units. We're going from 4, 3, going from there to there. So that is called a, we haven't talked about this too much, but that's just called a lateral or horizontal, horizontal translation. That's the key word. It just, it just moved a horizontal or lateral translation. It just moved on us over to the right, two units. Okay, so... That means it is a rigid motion because it, it, it maintains everything, okay? All right, let's go to, is that C? Yeah, all right, let's go to D now. Number 10, let's go to D. It says, compare the two transformations. Okay, so if we compare, you know, the first one, uh, B, it would be a non-rigid because we multiplied by 2. We multiplied by 2. So it changed the length of it. Okay, it doubles it. Um, both remained vertical. And I th probably should say that C was a rigid, I'm going to underline, underline, was a rigid, rigid transformation. Uh, what would we call this? I, I didn't really talk about that. What would we call this when you That's called a vertical stretch. A vertical stretch. All right, questions on 10? Hit me up. Let's move on. Let's do number 11. Somebody had a question on number 11. Okay, so it looks like it's similar. Do we want to do 11? Is there anything different? I don't think so. I think we're going to skip number 11. If you really need it, if you, if you have it, just uh, uh, we can do an individual Zoom if needed. But it's just like what we did for 10. All right, let's go over to number 14. All right, 14. It says match each transformation with the correct description. Okay, so let me write all the transformations. These are good to talk about. And then we'll talk about what the transformation is. So we got um, x, y, coordinate notation, multiplying the x by three, and y, okay? Uh, I think I know what that, that's it. Yeah, that's gonna multiply the x value by three, meaning it's gonna be a horizontal dilation. All right, so then we got x, y here, and that's going to be, we're moving this one now, three units to the right. Okay, and then we've got x, y, let's see what this one is. Oh, we're multiplying, just like we did previously. We're multiplying, so that's going to be a vertical stretch. Okay, and the d is x, y, what are we doing here? Oh, we're moving it up three units. Is that what that is? Y plus 3? Yeah, that looks like it's moving up 3 units. And then we got X, Y. And here, oh, we're doing both. This is getting, this is moving X and Y, multiplying by 3. So it's a, like a dilation for both. Okay, so what's the first one? It says dilation with a scale factor. That's the last one. Scale factor of three. Okay, so dilation just means you're multiplying it. It's getting larger or smaller. So that's going to be 
Well, I probably should have done that in, in red ink, so I'm gonna go like this. There we go. So that's E. All right, and what's the second one? A translation. Three units up. Okay, translation three units up, that to me looks like this. So that would be D, because we're taking the Y coordinate and three units. Okay, um, translation. Gotta get used to these terms. Translation is three units to the right. Okay, so to me that looks like this one. That would be B, three units to the right. Then we got a horizontal stretch, a factor. So it's not a dilation, so that's different. A dilation would be just overall, everything. This is a horizontal. Well, which one is the horizontal? That would be left and right. So that would be the X coordinate. So that's this one, that's A. And then our last one, the only one left, which would be a vertical stretch by a factor of three. Okay, so that's C. All right, so that does it, 14. So what you're learning is, hopefully, that these rules tell you what we're doing to the graph. If we add or subtract, that means we're either moving it to the right or moving it to the left. We're moving it up or we're moving it down. If we multiply by that value, if it's greater than one, this is something we'll talk about, but if it's greater than one, then it's a stretch. If it's less than one, then it's a shrink. So like if it's a fraction, we multiply by one half. We'll see more of that. So like something like this. That means we're cutting it in half. Okay? Okay. All right, so let me clarify. Homework is due tonight at 11.59. All right? When that homework is, uh, when you're done, we want everything submitted on Canvas. If you don't have your book, uh, check Canvas. Everything was, uh, yesterday was allowed for you to, submit it for you for a password so that you can get it. Okay? You get your, here, let me go sign up so you can see me. Um, so you can get your password and then you can log into your book. Okay, so make sure. Ooh, get my, there we go. <laughs> so make sure you get your password if you don't have your book. If you do have your book, great. If you don't, if you can come in and get your book, that'd be better. All right. Um, and homework's due tonight. Tomorrow we'll move on. Tomorrow we're going uh, on to the next section, one four. Okay. And then Friday, like I said, we're going to plan a Zoom. Let me write it here. Zoom on Friday, and I'll just send it out probably 11 a.m., but I'm going to coordinate with some of the other teachers that teach sophomores to make sure that you're not overloaded. Okay, so Zoom, 11 a.m. Okay, hope you guys are doing great. Hope everyone's safe. It's out there, all right? I think you guys know my wife's a nurse, and she says that they are getting bombarded with phone calls and conversations about people with uh, symptoms with covid Okay, and that's an Anderson area. So uh, stay safe. Be smart. Keep, keep, keep distance, socially distance. All right. Miss you guys all. Miss you all. And uh, we'll see you soon.